Well, my name is Randy Morin. I am here to tell you a story. But first, I want to thank Saskatoon Public Library for sponsoring this event. I want to thank Megan Stesick as well for making this happen. It's always an honor to tell stories. It's, uh, it's a real blessing to be recognized as a storyteller here in Saskatchewan, uh, Treaty 6 territory homeland of the Métis. I come from Big River First Nation. It's two and a half hours north of here. I grew up hearing a lot of stories from my grandmothers. One of them is still alive. The other one passed away this, passed away last August. She was 107. And so she told us many, many stories. And there's a lot of stories. As you know, stories are powerful. Stories are teaching. Indigenous people, we tell stories as a way to teach lessons, to teach the young people how to behave, uh, to recap, to, to uh, capture the past, capture the future. Uh, stories are a way of um, learning your, your worldview, uh, your spirituality. And our stories are sometimes really uh, powerful and fantastical almost. And, and so I love being around elders when they tell stories. A lot of storytelling happens when there's social gatherings on a, on a community, uh, such as weddings, funerals, uh, you know, celebrations, powwows, round dances, uh, you know, all the ceremonies that happen. Uh, right now it's uh, June and it's Sundance season. So a lot of our Indigenous people are gathering to prepare for their their big ceremonies. Ceremonies are what we do to uh, uh, fulfill our our commitments to uh, to what our ancestors left us. And they're very beautiful. These ceremonies are very beautiful and they're very ancient. Uh, so I myself will be attending a ceremony pretty quickly here as well. But I live in Saskatoon. I live here with my my wife and my two children. I teach at the University of Saskatchewan. I'm honored to be there. It's my, my third year there. No, it's my fourth year at the university. And I teach at the Department of Indigenous Studies. I teach the Cree language, as well as Indigenous Studies classes. Uh, so my background is, uh, I'm a Cree speaker, and um, I'm a ceremonial, uh, Oscapios helper, as we call them. And of course, I've been recognized as a storyteller, so it's a real honor to tell stories. Uh, the one story that really resonated with me was is called Grandfather Bear. And uh, this, this story is really well known uh, in this area, Treaty 6 territory. And I think it's important for young people to know some of our stories of the past and what happened on these lands, right? Because indigenous people roamed these lands for thousands of years, right? So there's a lot of stories, countless stories. And stories need to be captured and preserved for the future generations. You know, so my children, my grandchildren, I want them to know these stories. And there's a lot of sacred stories. There's protocol stories as well, such as don't tell certain stories if there's no snow on the ground. <laughs> Right. So and, and there's just rules with that. There's just rules. Don't tell certain stories if, if there's no snow. But when there is snow, then you can tell stories. So my first story is called Grandfather Bear. <laughs> I like telling this story because it is what it is. Grandfather Bear, like animals are our relatives. I myself am a children's author. My first book was called Our Relatives, the Animals Give Thanks. And my second book is called Sun and Moon, based on the lives of my two children. So anyway, here we go, Grandfather Bear. Here we go. Gayas, a long time ago. In this area, there lived a tribe, a tribe of people. And in this tribe, there was a homeless boy. And he was called Orphan Boy. And uh, the village raised this boy because the parents 
they were not there. You know, as, a, as you know, a long time ago, uh, you know, sometimes life can be pretty hard, pretty rough, and, you know, and you know, a long time ago, there was plains grizzly bears and mountain lions and huge wolves, dire wolves, you know, so, so times were pretty, uh, pretty tough, scary at times. And that's why you needed the whole community to raise a child. So this child, orphan boy, was raised in this community. And he grew up orphan boy. And he grew up to like, no, he, he grew up friends with the chief's daughter. The chief's daughter and orphan boy were best friends. And they grew up together. And, uh, you know, as how things happened, they eventually started to grow up and they fell in love. <laughs> Yeah, they fell in love. And so anyway, as they're growing up, Orphan Boy had nothing to give the chief's daughter's mom and dad. Because back in the day, you had to give something as a gift to, sh to show that you are sincere, that you want to marry your love. Well, this was a conundrum for Orphan Boy. He didn't know what to do, so they were pretty stuck. Until one day, there was an announcement made by the, by the Braves of the tribe. They were going to go on a horse raiding mission out west. Right? There was enemy tribes all around. Right? People didn't always get along. Anyway, so they had all winter to prepare. This, uh, this raid was going to happen in, a, in the springtime. So Orphan Boy... Chief's daughter, they made plans. You know, she was sewing him moccasins and, you know, he was making his, his arrows and, you know, just getting everything ready, making pemmican, you know, because it's going to be a, a long and arduous journey to the West. Well, springtime came and there was a huge celebration. There was a huge, huge celebration in the camp. You know, all the Braves, that volunteered to go. All their families were wishing them well. A lot of hugs. You know, a lot of well wishes. A lot of kisses. You know, four days of celebration. And it was time to go. So, they start running. They start running. As we say in Cree. And a couple braves stop. And they look back. And they were told to go back. Because you were not allowed to look back because it meant in your heart you weren't sure of what you wanted to do. So they were sent back. But Orphan Boy didn't, didn't hesitate at all. He, he kept on running. And Orphan Boy is a handsome, strong boy, normal boy. You know, brave, brave boy. And so, so they ran. They ran for days and days. And eventually, after a certain amount of time passed, the landscape started to change and they could see the mountains. So they knew they were in enemy territory. So they had to be very, very careful. So they would run uh, at night. They would hide during the day. Eventually, they came to the enemy camp. The enemy encampment. And it was vast, vast encampment. Hundreds of teepees. As far as the eye could see. And you know, so this was a really, really uh, scary and treacherous time. If they were discovered, who knows what, what would have happened to them. So uh, the lead brave asked for a volunteer. I need a volunteer. To go and scout out where the horses are. Boom. The first hand that goes up. Orphan boy. I'll do it. I'm brave. I'm strong. Right? So he got sent and off he went. Middle of the night he was gone. And early in the morning. He came back. And he was able to tell. The raiding party. The lay of the land. He said all the horses are tethered over there there's some horses over there and he said but there's one horse i want that horse is in the middle in the middle of that huge encampment it's a pure 
war pony. It's very beautiful. It's like tanned, very tanned, very nice, tall. And that's the horse I want. And so, and so anyway, they had to, uh, so they went in, the raiding party went in, they took their horses, an orphan boy went in, and he got, the, he got the horse, and he led it through, he led it through the encampment, and wouldn't you know it, he was spotted, and the whole tribe were alerted that there were, there was a raiding party within their tribe. So they all, out comes the braves with their spears and their arrows and they're shooting orphan boy. And he jumped on a horse and he's riding and he's going through the teepees. But one spear got him right through the thigh, right here, boom, hit him right there. But off he went. He, he eventually caught up to his raiding party. And when he caught up to them, he fell off his horse from you he had so much loss of blood and they didn't want to pull out the spear they said orphan boy this looks like a a, a, a fatal hit you're not going to make it home so orphan boy said well this horse is for a chief the chief's daughter make sure she gets this horse so build me a little wigwam stockpile it full of food and arrows and i will stay here and i will i will try to get better if not, I will perish. But at least I tried. So they left him. They left Orphan Boy and off they went. So they got back to their community. And there's the chief's daughter waiting. You know, this is weeks. Weeks has gone by. And they come riding in. No, no Orphan Boy. And, and his name was announced. Orphan Boy fell in battle. And so the chief's daughter was very disheartened. She was very sad. She went to her teepee and she was about to cut her hair as a sign of mourning to cut hair. And the lead brave comes and tells her, uh, you have, you know, the orphan boy's still alive. He's, he's tucked away, you know, near the mountains by a river. And so guess what the chief's daughter did? She quickly bundled up as much moccasins as she can, as much food as she can. And when nobody was watching, she snuck off. Because if she was spotted, they were, they, she, she's the chief's daughter. They would never let her go. So she snuck off when the celebrations were happening that same night. And the search party was sent out for her right away. But they couldn't find her. She was hiding the whole way. And so this really devastated the community. She made it back to the mountains. She found Orphan Boy in his wigwam. And he was quite the sight. He was almost, he was on his deathbed. He, you know, his leg was infected. And so she stayed there with him all winter and she nursed him back to health. She would, you know, snare rabbits, you know. Anyway, they survived all winter. Come springtime, orphan boy had a vision, had a vision. He said, pack our stuff. We're going to be leaving tomorrow. Grandfather's coming for us. And she's like, Grandfather, you don't have any relatives. And, and Orphan Boy said, I, my grandfather came to me in a vision. He's going to take us home. Next morning, she woke up, grizzly bear, huge grizzly bear in front of her door. And Orphan Boy said, that's Grandfather. He's come to take us home. So they both rode the, the grizzly bear. They walked home. After many days, they were spotted and they were welcomed into the village the chief his wife the whole village celebrated they were so happy that orphan boy was alive and the chief's daughter was alive and so they made orphan boy the chief and they lived happily ever after and that's the story of grandfather bear thank you very much for listening